How's it going, Yankee fans? My name is Alex with my co-host here, Ryan Garcia. If you are new to the channel, make sure to leave us a voicemail. We're going to be featuring voicemails from the fans on the channel moving forward. 631-762-3518. You can see it on the top right of the graphics. Um, easy enough. Leave us a voicemail. We'd love to talk about your thoughts, perspectives about this team, and any questions you might have that we can answer. Always happy to involve you in this process and building this awesome community, so we appreciate all the love. But yesterday's win felt like it sparked this team when Josh Donaldson stepped up to the plate and gave us that half swing. And I was like, Oh, good Lord. This is, this is going to be bad. And then he slaps a freaking oppo field grand slam to walk it off after Raldis Chapman gave up three runs to Francisco Maja, the freaking backup catcher for Tampa Bay. I was losing my shit in the net in the ninth inning, losing it. I was like, you pulled Scott Efros for this. Like, come on, Josh Donaldson provided a much needed spark, you know, and, and shout out to him. Um, playing this game, his uncle just had a heart attack, so sending our prayers over to Josh Donaldson and his family as they kind of hope for the best over there. And he did this for him. He was very emotional after the game. This was electrifying this moment, sparking this Yankee team, and you could see everybody needed it. Everybody needed it. They may, they may, he may have just awoken the beast. And I, I really hope that the Yankees are just hibernating and enjoying a little bit of blubber for the last couple of weeks here after the after the All-Star break. But this is the perfect time to wake up and start going on another hot stretch. Josh Donaldson didn't expect it, an unexpected star in that moment. But I'll tell you what, we needed it badly, and a veteran guy coming up in that moment was amazing. Ryan, what was your impression, your perspective, your feeling and emotion after that moment? So Donaldson hitting that home run caps off a big night for the middle of the lineup. Glaber hits a home run. Rizzo hits a home run. Donaldson hits a home run. They have not been getting production from those spots. I've talked religiously about how important it is to get production from those spots. Glaber had a pretty strong series. Um, He ended up hitting 385 with a 615 selling percentage in that series against Tampa, which I think is a good confidence booster for him. I think the Yankees are a better team when he's hitting, when Donaldson's hitting, when Rizzo's hitting. I think that's obvious, obviously. But, uh, you know, Donaldson has been a guy who just needed to have his moment. I feel like, you know, you, know, you look at he's kind of been the uh ever since gallo left uh kind of gotten a lot of the hate that gallo is getting um and that's because now without gallo there he's the guy that kind of sticks out like a sore thumb in terms of high expectations offensively and not meeting them and granted you know donaldson still isn't having a great offensive season but you know uh, this is an emotional moment for him this is a big moment for him this is a big moment for the yankees this is the type of win you have that can turn your series around this is what that team needed and to see him you know yell we're back to glaber uh right after that home run it's something you know this team needs to have that spark this team need needed that win um and you know again when you see Glaber, Rizzo, and Donaldson hitting the way they're hitting, and even Ben Intendi, I know Ben Intendi has kind of quietly gotten hot lately. He's hitting very, very well over the last few games, uh, which is really encouraging to see. He's hitting, I believe, 305 uh, in recent play. You know, that's really important for the Yankees, right? To see Ben Intendi hitting well. If you can get Torres, Donaldson, Rizzo, and Ben Intendi to start hitting, it doesn't matter if that judge doesn't have a home run in the last, I think, week or something like that. He's. It's not going to matter because you're going to have other guys helping him out, protecting him in that lineup. It feels like a lot of teams have, like, they walked judge with the bases loaded. Bases loaded. They still didn't give in to him because you know what? They trust everyone else in that lineup to not get a hit. And I know Glaber came up short there with that double play, but you know, I look at how Glaber started that top of the, uh, the that bottom of the tenth inning with a single. It looks minimal. It looks like nothing, but that is that set up what Donaldson ended up doing. Um, you know, it's important. It's imperative. You know, even Rizzo having a great at bat against Beeks. That's a tough lefty to face. Those are some t close pitches he took. You know, it takes a team effort to win baseball games. You can't just have Aaron judge bail you out and hit a grand slam every single game. That can't be how you win. It's not going to work. Judge. Is it perfect? There's no perfect baseball player. Let's just look at the greatest seasons you'll we've seen in recent memory from Barry Bonds. He did not single-handedly carry his team to victory um, night in and night out. That team fell short in October. Those teams, you know, didn't win a world series every year. And that's because one generational all-time great player can't win you a world series. It takes a team effort. Um, and, you know, I know Chapman had a rough night last night. You know, he has looked better lately, but last night was that first blemish. I'll take that being his blemish because, you know what, it resulted in a win. So uh, ultimately, I would rather him have his bad outings in inconsequential games than have it in, you know, bigger spots like against, you know, Boston when he had a really strong series there um, and kind of tied the bullpen together. I don't think I want Chapman in, in, you know, ninth inning, tenth inning situations. If I can have him in the sixth instead of those situations, I'll prefer that. Uh, but I look at guys like Scott Efros stepping up and giving the Yankees big outs. Ron Marinasio coming back. Ron Marinasio should never have been in the minor leagues. I think that is evident based on what we saw 
last night and he, whenever he's on the roster, this team wins games sometimes because of him in a quiet way. If he doesn't give him that, if he doesn't have those two big outs, you know, Trevino was not, uh, did not have his command. He's been a, lo- a way more wild lately than usual. Maybe that's him. Tr- I know he's changing his cutter a little bit, so maybe that's a part of it. But damn it, I mean, look at the, look at how that team played tonight. That, 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 last night they didn't play their best baseball. They didn't hit the best runs in scoring position. But when it mattered, when game was on the line, when they needed the game to win, Josh Donaldson stepped up, and I think this is the exact type of win this team needed for them to go on a tear here. Four games against the Blue Jays. If you can take three out of four, you've won this division, in my opinion. Look, I'm going to – maybe this is a hot take, but I think Ron Marinasso should be closing games in the absence of uh, Clay Holmes. I do not trust Clay, uh, Raul Chapman in high-leverage situations. He's been your setup man for Clay Holmes the last couple of weeks, which he's done a pretty good job in. He could not handle that big moment. You could see he was breathing heavy. They did a couple of close-up shots on him, and he was like, like – he was breathing. Like he was not feeling confident, you could tell, because the guy threw, what, one strike in his first nine pitches – with a man on second base, he walks up two batters and then gives up a, a bases clearing double down the down the right field line. It just it cannot happen. That cannot happen in the postseason. If Clay Holmes misses a game and you need a Raul Chapman to step up and do something, I do not trust him. If he can't do it in the regular season, the postseason, absolutely not. No way. Not trusting him. With that being said, Ron Marinostio seems like he does not have emotion. He does not feel pressure. He does not feel uh, anxiety. He is dead, like focused. Like I trust four months, four months of pitching out of the bullpen. He's given up one run. Okay. When you have a guy that electric right now, you put them in spots to improve their game, to show that they can do it in high leverage situations. He has the best change up on this team. It is unbelievable. Every single pitch he has forcing fastball, change up slider all above average in, in horizontal break. And then you add his change up, which is better. And it is above average. Um, and horizontal break and vertical movement. So you're looking at a guy who's got some incredible movement on his pitches. Batters are not used to seeing that type of stuff. Like from every single one of his pitches too. It's not just one. It's all of them. They move like crazy. Um, so I, when I'm looking at Marinasio, I think that he should be getting those high leverage situations over Chapman every single day of the week. I know that they want to, they want Chapman to be that guy. But like you said, Marinasio should not have been in the in the minor leagues. The only reason they put him there, in my opinion, was because he had tri- he had a uh, minor league options, and they wanted to test out a couple guys. They wanted to see what Lou Trevino had. They wanted to see what Scott Efros could do. They needed to they needed to see what guys could do in August. So that way, when the postseason came around. They knew who to rely on. I think Marinasio is a playoff caliber bullpen arm. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Maybe that's a hot take, but I do trust him right now a lot more than a Chapman. No, I think Marinasio. I look at you know the the trust tree for me. I, I don't have a I have a hard time listing more than one or two guys that I would put over Marinasio. He's absolutely dominant. Look at the changeup. He's very good against lefties. The fastball. He's throwing it a little bit harder now. Getting consistently 95, 96, 97. Uh, the slider command has looked a little bit better. He's uh, um, he's throwing it with more. Uh, you know he's getting better results on that pitch. You know I I look at a guy like Marinasio, and this is another example of the Yankees. You know going to their minor league depth and pulling out a really strong pitcher from. It. You know, I know Steven Ridings is a guy last year who kind of burst onto the scene. Unfortunately, injuries have kind of shortened that. Uh, but Marinasio is a guy where the Yankees don't need to go out and spend on these big relievers. Uh, I think you, you start looking at how they're going to operate over the next four or five years. I know this is big picture, but Marinasio is another example of the Yankees can just churn these guys out. That changeup is not. Like that changeup is not a normal changeup. That is a screwball type pitch. And for hitters, as you mentioned, they don't know what to do with it, right? They're not hitting Marinasio hard. They have an 85.7 mile per hour exit velocity against. And I know pitchers can't always completely control how hard a ball is hit against them, but damn it, I can't imagine it's fun trying to hit a ball hard uh, against Marinasio. He gets wicked horizontal movement, as you mentioned, and then he gets a lot of ride on his fastball. That pitch plays up in the zone. It doesn't break, it doesn't have that sinking action that hitters typically expect from a pitch being released at that angle and with that horizontal movement he is a unique pitcher he is a pitcher with a unique arsenal not many players in baseball i mean pitchers in baseball can replicate that arsenal and because he's one of the few pitchers in baseball who can who can have a sweeping slider uh, a fastball to run and ride a changeup that's a screwball basically and throw so hard it makes him so deceptible his stuff is ridiculous the yankees are gonna win baseball games that they shouldn't win or games or you know, keep themselves in close games or win close games single-handedly because of Ron Marinasio. I know, again, I mentioned the whole point about teams, you know, you have to win with your team. It can't just be one guy, but Marinasio is definitely a big one guy to have considering the leverage of situations we're talking about here. 
Imagine if the Yankees had to go to a struggling Clay Holmes in that situation. Not to diss Clay Holmes, but he, he's clearly not right. If they have to go to him in that situation, the Yankees don't win that game. You know, the Yankees didn't score in the ninth. It's not like, you know, the Yankees, you know, won the game in the ninth inning. There's no guarantee that they would have gone to extras if it wasn't for Ryan Asio. It's first and second one out, gets a strikeout, is throwing strikes, doesn't mess around. You know, he's just so unbelievably important to this team. I think the Yankees are going to recognize that. Holmes is out until September, probably. I think they're going to keep him there until that extra pitcher spot opens up. Then they'll bring him back in. That keeps Marnasio on the fold for a while. You look at your lower leverage guys who can give you quality innings still. You know, I know Licky didn't have the best outing yesterday, but I still think he can give you quality outing uh, innings in the fifth and sixth inning. You know, if a star doesn't go deep into a game, I feel the same way about Abreu. I think Abreu is still a guy who's got quality stuff. Um, you know, I look Trevino, I hope can be a little bit better. The ERA hasn't been bad for him, but he's walking too many guys. Um, I look at Chapman. I feel the same way about him as I do Abreu and Licky. Um, and I look at the high leverage guys, Efros. Efros has been, you know, he's another big addition to this team. He's pitching in high leverage, and that's something the Yankees need. Uh, and then you have Luizaga looking better. Peralta's been steady all year. Uh, I, I feel good about this bullpen down the stretch, and I feel good about the guys we're going to be getting back with Holmes and potentially a Britain or or maybe even a Stephen Writings. You know, this this bullpen is definitely good right now, but and very good right now. And it's going to keep getting better throughout the season. And they're going to have options throughout the season if anyone starts to struggle or goes down with injury. So for the first time all year, I think I feel like this bullpen has is impermeable and that I'm not worried about this bullpen down the stretch, which is a big, big thing for this team because they have not won close games. It's because of the bullpen and because of not hitting in clutch situations. Yeah, and that's not even to mention that Giancarlo Stanton is going to be coming back next week. Aaron Boone said yesterday that um, he's going to start a rehab assignment, hopefully in the minor leagues, on this upcoming weekend. And then hopefully return to the team. DJ LeMay, who had a nice little pinch hit single in the seventh inning uh, to help load those bases. I think he pushed Trevino over to second base. And then um, there was, an I think, Rizzo had a single and then Judge walked in. So, you know, you're looking at um, a pretty good situation here where, you know, the Yankees are getting healthier at some spots. Other spots, you know, not as much. But Clay Holmes will be back. He's fine. Ron Marinasio, I feel very confident, can can help smoothen that blow. Um, and, and having a healthy Clay Holmes without the back spasms come the postseason is exactly what you want. So these IL spells are perfectly timed, absolutely perfectly timed for these guys to come back. Severino is going to be 100%. He said recently he hasn't felt this good the entire year. He feels amazing. That is such good news. I, I don't even think we can comprehend how good news it is that Severino is coming back feeling his absolute best. Um, instead of coming off Tommy John surgery and coming in without much reps last year in the wild card game. You know what I mean? Like this is perfect scenario for him. Clay Holmes is going to be healthy. Stanton's coming back. Matt Carpenter will be back. Harrison Bader will be back. Castro will be back. Don't really expect much from him, but he'll be back anyway. Um, there are a lot of guys on this team that are making recoveries. LeMahieu is still dealing with the toe inflammation, but he should be fine in a couple of days. Um, he's still making an impact when needed. Uh, so this is a, this is a great situation for the Bombers. They are getting healthier. Apologies for that. They are getting healthier, but at the end of the day, um, they still need to string together wins now. And hopefully, this this big grand slam last night from Josh Donaldson sparks a win here. And I think it was the jolt they needed. Uh, but guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Fireside Yankees. As I said before, make sure to leave us a voicemail. Always happy to hear your thoughts and perspectives. Uh, we will definitely be showcasing them on future episodes. So appreciate that. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the, the grand slam last night. I mean, I was definitely, it was a late game. There was a rain delay, but hell, if you stayed up for it, it was definitely worth, it was definitely worth the pain and, uh, uh, seeing all the Chapman almost blow that game away. So definitely a fun one there. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy, uh, the, the rest of this, uh, four game series against the Toronto blue Jays coming up. It's going to be a big one for us to kind of help cushion that AL East lead a little bit more. I think we're 10.5, 10 games up. I'm not sure exactly. Maybe 11 after the Tampa Bay win. So we'll see what goes on there. But guys, make sure to like and subscribe as always. We'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Yankees episode.